All right. I am Ryan. I have Ben Manship with me. He is a partner with us on KHB Vinyl and Hardwood Flooring. Today, we are going to talk about if you are building a new home or doing a full home renovation, what flooring should you use? Why should you use it? Where should you put it? All the nuances of performance of flooring, types of flooring, all that good stuff. Great. Cause that's, uh, I'm glad that you brought that up. That's one of the biggest values that, that you're going to get purchasing or using uh, KHB fl flooring. And why is that? Well, it's because that's the biggest, that's the biggest question that you need to answer before you, you, you select flooring. And it's the, it's an ambiguous unknown question yeah. mark, depending on where you go. Yeah. Right? Well, everyone's going to have somewhat of a different answer. For they that. can. And I think our answer for it is going to be more performance based. Yeah. Right. We don't want a laminate in a bathroom type of yeah. situation. Uh, we don't want maybe a hardwood floor where you're going to be having pet traffic and it's mm -hmm. going to get scratched. Like there's a, there's a endless examples that we could talk about. It really is. Yeah. Performance. I want to mostly talk about OBP to start mm -hmm. off with, cause that is kind of the, the hot thing. And it has been for a little bit. Yeah. Um, hopefully California doesn't outlaw LVP flooring. If you're yeah. listening to us, <laughs> yeah, hopefully what is it? The EPA or whatever. Yeah. The protection the, they, agency. They say that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. They say that they're having a hard time recycling it. So yeah. They want, they want to eliminate. I heard uh, electric car batteries are hard to recycle too. Yeah. I'm sure that Tesla yeah. will stop producing those cars soon. <laughs> Jeez. All right. <laughs> so LVP, uh, a wide array of price points all the way from like dollar 99 all the way up to, you know, eight plus dollars a square foot yeah. for some of the good stuff. What are you putting in? I know we use SPC as one of our main vendors. Um, give us the kind of the performance quality on those price points and then where we should be installing that flooring. Yeah, so there's a lot of different types of waterproof plank. Uh, why is waterproof plank the right floor? Uh, well, it's because there's you can't really go wrong with a waterproof plank. No matter what what life traffic that you have going on in your home, yeah, uh, it can handle it can handle swimming pools. It this can is handle for bathrooms, both a slab or a raised foundation. Yeah, it's a pretty versatile. It's floor. irrelevant. Yeah. You know, a floating floor can can go over either one of those subfloors. Uh, there is a difference in floor leveling. Uh, raised wood foundations seem to uh, not not be as pricey, mm -hmm. just due to the fact that you're you're sanding. If you have a high sp spot in wood, then you're sanding it down, and versus concrete, you're grinding it down. Yeah. And that that concrete grinding process is is much more involved and dirty and, 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 and dirty. loud <laughs> and loud and messy and we, yeah, we we prepare people the best we can yeah. for, for this is a construction project inside your home you know we set that expectation level early uh but as far as whether it's going to cost more or less if you're over wood or concrete and it's a floating floor it doesn't matter the only time that that does matter is if you're doing a glue down lvp floor so a glue glue direct product needs to have a super smooth surface, or it's we're going to see everything in it's there. Possible, yeah. yeah. So, and, but some glue down LVP planks are as thick as a floating floor. The really nice ones, yeah, yeah. But not a lot of people like them because they have the impression it's a false impression, but they have the impression that it's a cheaper floor because there's no locking mechanism. Yeah, and I mean, kind of the. Like in my mind, right? Mm -hmm. I think of a, a glue down LVP. I'm mm -hmm. thinking commercial. Mm -hmm. Like every time my head just goes straight yeah. to, you know, shopping mall or warehouse. Right. Or You're not alone either. A lot of yeah. people, uh, their heads go that way. And some people's heads go that way so hardcore that that's the way that they think, even though that it's not true. Um, but it's easy to, to feel that way when you see less product in the plank, yeah. you know, or it's it's thinner in some way. But if you're going over a concrete foundation and you glue your LVP down, what's the difference between gluing down an LVP that, you, that, that the brain associates with commercial and gluing down an engineered wood floor that the brain associates with residential? Yeah. Right? So, I mean, and there's an advantage point. of glue down. Like uh, some people don't like the sound of a floating floor, even though the the industry has made leaps and bounds on how that floor sounds when you walk on it. Yeah. When Pergo first uh, was the first originator of laminate flooring. Uh, Which is in my home, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it? We're going to be tearing that out. Oh, shortly. Ryan. <laughs> Maybe it was I need a to beginner find a different mistake. partner for this was, uh, podcast. <laughs> 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 yeah. So one of the things we see the most, though, and the industry has seen is from the laminates from when they first came out is them falling apart because of what 
you could you could be cleaning it with the wrong thing and that floral foam fall well, apart. I mean, and that wear layer just starts peeling back, you know? And yeah, it's, it's, it's really not the wear, it, it's the core. So the, the floor absorbs the moisture through the joints mm -hmm. and then it expands the core. And then which is this, essentially like particle board, which laminate. is essentially, yeah, it's a hard pressed particle board in the core of that, yeah. of that laminate. So the reason why LVP came out in the first place, Cortec was the original person that came out with luxury vinyl plank. And over the years, when we go to industry store uh, shows where they release new products, we started seeing the laminate section shrink more and more yeah. and the LVP section grow more and more. Let's solve the big problem. It right? did. For consumers when and I, for contractors. Yeah. When yeah. I, when I, when I became a uh, licensed Nalpha inspector, which is the North American laminate flooring association, uh, they said that the number one fail uh, reason and cause of failed floors, uh, laminate floors, floating floors, wood floors was moisture and water. Mm. So by going to an LVP, they eliminated um, that potential but there's a caveat to that now, Ryan. Tell me. Waterproof plank isn't moisture proof. Mm. Does that sound like it makes sense to you rationally? Well, I can see that on a slab foundation. Uh -huh. You might have some moisture issues. Yeah. Um, but tell me more. Yeah. So, <laughs> so waterproof. You're the professional in this. Yeah. Waterproof plank. Uh, we recommend putting it in. Um, and you can take a plank of, uh, of LVP and submerge it in a bucket if you had a bucket that was long enough to yeah, hold an LVP four foot plank, plus right? Bucket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> long, 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 yeah. narrow bazooka bucket. Um, you could pull that plank out, let it, let it dry and install it. And it, and it, and it's going to be fine. But the moisture that emits out of concrete and you're, you're in general contractor. So of course you're, I have to know a little bit. About <laughs> <everything>. <laughs> yeah. 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 But Joe consumer, he's like, well, what's it sounds like double talk. You yeah. know, you're, I'm selling, I'm buying a waterproof floor, but it's not moisture proof. Well, the, the the explanation makes perfect sense, but it doesn't. It's not the first thing that you would think of that makes sense. Well, here's another one, and you know, I've talked to ooh, touch feet. Oh. Uh, I've talked to multiple contractors, and you know this is something I don't have a, an absolute answer on. But using instead of like a a moisture barrier, mm -hmm. doing like an epoxy to seal that slab, or doing like a red guard application. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Um, so, a little bit more labor intensive, but are, are there any benefits to doing like an epoxy, basically underlayment? Absolutely. Okay. The best way um, to 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 protect your LVP is by doing a moisture moisture barrier over concrete. That's a roll on epoxy based moisture barrier. Awesome. So not just you know floating PVC sheets, um, actual bonding to the slab with an epoxy or yeah. some sort of waterproofing yeah what 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 we do over concrete uh on good and better jobs is we put down a vapor barrier plastic underneath the floor so that moisture isn't allowed to come through that plastic and warp the planks of the lvp and cause them to come apart it does a really good job it has a low price point However, if your slab is emitting a high amount of moisture, the danger that, that you could potentially have with that is that moisture that comes and emits out of that slab can get trapped, is going to be trapped underneath that vapor barrier plastic and could cause discoloration and, and different things that we know happen whenever moisture is trapped. Yeah. And so when you do a roll-on moisture membrane, it eliminates that. You get the same protection from the moisture from the floor without any potential of future. Uh, and I could kind of see that being like a future proof option too. Like, let's say I was a, I had a, a rental property, mm -hmm. right? And I have to change that floor out. I'm going with the cheap LVP because I'm going to have to change it after two tenants or whatever it may be. Um, it's already done, right? Like yeah. that moisture barrier, how long would that last? Is it like a 20 year barrier, 30 year barrier? Is it lifetime? Like, well, it depends on which moisture barrier that you put talking on. Talking the epoxy, like the roll-on yeah. application. Well, there's a lot of different epoxy moisture barriers, right? <laughs> of course so it are. depends yeah. on which ones you put on. Um, uh, someone, I could, I could roll on a moisture barrier for you for 85 cents a square foot, but it's only, it's not going to protect your floor all of the way, and it's kind of like halfway doing it. Yeah. The the moisture membranes that we put on are more towards the two dollar a square foot. Um, price range and it will it's guaranteed to and warranted the life of your floor the good stuff yeah the good okay. stuff so lvp long story short pretty much good for the full home besides showers yeah right yeah. okay um yeah and there's a few applications like with roll-in showers and transitioning 
from LVP the tile that you know we could dive into with uh, different waterproofing methods. Yeah, you know, how far a lap that PVC and, barrier, and you don't want to put your LVP outside your house either. I see that happening. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> the entryway is LVP <laughs> yeah. or LVT tiles coming yeah. to the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the, the, that's some landlord stuff, right? The there. The weather and that's that's homeowner do it yourself stuff. Yeah, and if if they're doing it themselves and and they're okay with nailing through the plank to their their porch floor um and they're that's okay with them they're probably not worried about warranty at that point they're probably not however we get asked to install lvp on exterior patios um every Mm. every year so we we know what we're doing so we we don't do that (laughs) right but i don't want that risk (laughs) but if you go to another store and you want to buy lvp and you want to install it even if you're going to install it yourself they're just going to sell you the floor and let you install it and have have it fall apart because even if you installed it correctly which would be a miracle Mm. to do it yourself and install it right uh the weather the sun and the at the weather and the change in temperature it's it's gonna it's not gonna last in that so let's dive into laminate and i think i know the answer Mm -hmm. don't do it yeah okay what are your thoughts on laminate and especially like and we're talking you know 2023 you're remodeling your home you're building your new forever custom home Mm -hmm. is laminate even should that even be an option for homeowners under the present conditions i don't recommend doing laminate uh even even though the industry is producing what they say is moisture proof laminate waterproof laminate most of it is only waterproof from the top down. I was going to say, is it moisture proof, waterproof, or water resistant? Right. Because that, that, that nomenclature there is just a sales tactic, really. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And, and the, even our good manufacturers that we know have cores that are good and that stay together, some of them are, are producing some, some all-around waterproof laminate, not just from the top, but all, all four sides. However, it, it hasn't been out very long and I haven't seen the performance on it. Mm-hmm. And so it, there's just no reason, yeah. you know, to, to spend a higher price point or a, or any price point. Well, why and, would you spend, you know, two, three dollars more per square foot on something that might last 20 years yeah. when you could just spend the same price for something that will last right. over 20 years? Right. Which is yeah. the advantage you get when you buy from a flooring store that has 30 years of experience. Mm. So, yeah. Which yeah. is us. Yeah, which is us. Awesome. Okay, so laminate, don't do it. All the new buyers out there. Um, next up, I want to lump in hardwood and engineered hardwood. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that, there's obviously differences yeah. in, in both of those uh, products. Uh, kind of dive in, because if I'm building a custom home, mm-hmm. I'm doing hardwood, mm-hmm. right? I'm doing three quarter inch mm-hmm. by, you know, inch and a quarter, two and a quarter, random offset, polished with a clear, glossy finish. Like I'm, I, I'm going bougie. Right. right. What are the benefits of having that floor? Where should we have that floor? Is it strictly going to be for accents or living spaces or a whole home? Kind of dive into that with me. Right. So, so first question I would ask you is what kind of family do you have and what kind of conditions? I have, do you have? three kids under mm-hmm. five uh-huh. and I have three dogs. I have six chickens and four cats. Ah, uh, so <laughs> I'm a high risk buyer. You are. Yeah, you are. We've, uh, we've installed beautiful, um, uh, sand and finished custom oak floors with with borders and templates and medallions and all of that stuff that couldn't stand up against a couple dogs. Ouch. So okay. you can... You can I'm not talking chihuahuas. I'm like, they're, it's a black lab and an Anatolian shepherd. Yeah. So, so, so that like, floor, while being beautiful and engineered uh, and real wood floors are my favorite flooring too. Yeah. But in my house, I have LVP. Yeah, because I want it to look good for a really long time, and I have a dogs. I have dogs too. I have a big German Shepherd that skids across my LVP floor. It hasn't been able to scratch <laughs> it. He skids. He's the sliding stop type yeah. of dog. Yeah, and I'll never forget <laughs> this house in Del Rio. It's a really nice community in Modesto, California. A lot of high end homes, a lot of hardwood flooring. We sanded and finished a job that that was installed previously with all of this amazing work and it just looked like freddy krueger went through <laughs> the whole house and their nails went through the finish yeah. and gouged the bare wood below um there is a place for for hardwood and engineered floors if if your if your life uh is congruent yeah, if your with, lifestyle fits you know fits the it. finish yeah, yeah. i know that ryan that you wouldn't want to to spend forty thousand dollars on a floor 
and three years later look like it's 15 years old. Yeah. But with that, I mean, we could talk about the wear layer, right? We like can. engineered, like my rule of thumb is you could, you could refinish engineered up to about three times, um, three to five, depending on the wear layer. I could be wrong. Engineer, I'm going to preface with engineered that. Engineered usually only gets one sand and finish out of an One, okay. The reason being is the difference between engineered flooring and, and solid oak or solid of any wood species flooring yeah. is engineered just has a, a very thin top layer of, hard of real yeah. hardwood. Yeah. So if it's maple, if it's if it's acacia, if it, if it's oak, if it's whatever it is, it, it just has that thin layer. So there's only so much wood that you can sand and finish. Yeah, down you can't to. get down a raw grain again. No. Yeah. But on a, a solid wood floor, you can you can sand and yeah, finish that thing for the next hundred years. Yeah. It's the most renewable resourced floor um, in in the world is real wood. Uh, if you have a lifestyle that again, yeah. The the the. Uh, I'll wait till the dogs are outside and the kids go to college. Yeah, I mean, wait yeah. for the dogs are outside and the kids go to college. We'll put in a sick herring bone or anything okay, that you sweet. want in there. Uh, so engineered flooring, hardwood flooring, though, is better over concrete. It's more moisture resistant. Okay. Uh, it, it has layers and of plywood mm. that are moisture treated. So as moisture hits the wood. So is that similar to like a CDX or like an OSB? Yeah. It's not particle like a laminate wood. No. Be. Okay. No, it's not particle. Although... I can't say that because they 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 do Shaw has a uh, real engineered hardwood that has a laminate core that they say is harder than the sheeting of plywood in in the stereotypical um, historically made engineered floors. All I can I don't know why rating. all I'm picturing right now is a new build with engineered hardwood as the shear. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I'm like, you know, can I have an engineer write this up for me? Like, yeah, true hardwood flooring uh, enthusiasts hate the uh, laminate particle board core of okay. engineered wood. Uh, the industry swears that it's a that that it's not cheap and it's not. You know, they swear yeah. that it's better, but I don't know if it is. <laughs> Yeah. One one really good thing that, that the industry has come out with, we just did a training in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And, pre, you know, uh, do you hand-scraped engineered wood floors, right? It yeah. has the bevels. It yeah. has the, the variances, the knots, and different things. Yeah. Well, typically, you couldn't sand and refinish that or put a new coat of finish on it without flattening out all, all of those, that distressing. All the beautiful, right? Yeah. All the, the, the characteristics of the floor that caused you to buy it in the first place. Yeah. However, uh, Loba Vockel, uh just came is a German uh, manufacturer of all the the premium hardwood floor finishes and uh, also the moisture membrane systems underneath the floor. Uh, they came out with a way now that we can what's called screen and coat uh, a uh, engineered floor that's distressed, and it's not by sanding; it's by applying a layer of uh, a product on it that will take. An was it a road? Will a road top erode. layer off? No, it won't erode it. it. It allows so the way that you typically put a new layer of finish on a hardwood floor when it when it gets scratched and and it you need to do a, a screening coat every seven years on a sand and finish hardwood floor. But what you do is you buff that top layer of finish and then you put on another polyurethane finish, right, or a water waterborne finish. Mm-hmm. But now then just. Loba Vockel came out with a with a product that we can apply to the top of it, of the finish, and it will allow the new coat of finish to stick to it. We really need to like incorporate the TV into this podcast. Yeah, I need like I need a Jamie David. I need a Jamie that's just like hey, pull this <laughs> up on YouTube because that's crazy. That'd yeah. be cool to see. How yeah, it it's really amazing. Yeah, it also we haven't done it yet. It just came out, but according to them, you can also put new finishes on luxury vinyl plank. No way. It's dead serious. That's awesome. The same the same coating that you use to to put another layer of finish on yeah. a hardwood floor, they're saying that we can put that that application coating on a on a luxury vinyl plank and put a new waterborne hardwood finish clear coat on the top of it and revitalize the whole thing. Okay. Which That's is, awesome. Which is pretty awesome. That's really cool. You know? Yeah. All right. So hardwood, engineer hardwood, if it fits your lifestyle. Yeah. Do it. If it fits About your lifestyle, right. do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, now inside of all these, you, know, you talked about some of the accents like medallions, you can do borders, you can do all these things with different hardwood applications. Mm-hmm. There's also in LVP, there's also LVT, luxury yeah. vinyl tiles. There's all these other right. you know, caveats to the category. 
Um, aside from that, I mean, they're I think LVP and Hardwood are kind of the the leaders mm-hmm. of you know flooring. Um, obviously, depending on your lifestyle, depending on what you're going to be doing right. with the home. When we get in the bathrooms, that's kind of where LVT kind of takes place um, instead of tile. Where obviously you can use LVP planks, but tell me a little bit a little bit about LVT. Um, yeah, so, why it's valuable to homeowners. So the difference between LVP and LVT is the plank versus the tile, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So twelve LVT by twelve is, or forty eight yeah, by six and yeah, a half, or whatever. or, or yeah. even longer, right? Yeah. Depending, but the the benefits of going with a uh, an LVT, which is a, a tile that looks like ceramic tile, is is the the labor to install it. For instance, is like eight dollars a square foot cheaper. Yeah. So just, on any surface, on any surface. whether it's because I yeah. mean, like if we're doing tile, for example, like my price for raised foundation, you know, I have to thin set that hardy backer down. Mm-hmm. Then I have to install a hardy backer, yes. screw it down, and then yeah. thin set on top of that, and then install the tile. Yeah. And it's you have to go outside to cut the tile on yeah. the wet saw. And then once the tile is dry, you have to grout the tile. You have to grout it. And then, and then you have to seal the grout. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to seal the tile, yeah. right? Whereas LVT is just kind of... Yeah. And then done. once once all of that work on that ceramic tile is done and you've sealed the, t- the grout, you're still going to call a company like ours, KHB, carpet cleaning, tile cleaning out to um, reapply that... that uh, that grout sealer, it doesn't last forever. Yeah, it's about every year you want to be re- right. Resealing. Go into your mom's yeah. house, look at her tile in her kitchen, look at the grout, yeah. and and you can see what happens to grout. And that doesn't happen with LVT, right? And it's warranted for a lifetime. Yeah. And when you drop something on an LVT tile, it's not going to crack across the tile, causing causing you to have to replace the tile if you have a tile that matches. God, you know. Yeah, God knows which it yeah, never that's happens. always an issue when people try to you know, save their floor tile mm-hmm. or it's, I always tell them like, we can do our best, but yeah. if they installed this properly, none of this is coming out yeah. in Pe- a full tile. We, people have found when switching over from ceramic tile to LVT tile, that it stays looking like the day that we, you installed it for much longer for, for really the life of that floor. And there's, and there's a lot of color options, a lot of different styles of it that you can almost get lookalikes there, to there the is. tile you want. And if you're curious how it would look in your kitchen, we have a digital optimizer where we can imprint the, the, your floor, whatever floor that you're, you're yeah. interested in, into your kitchen and see what it looks like against your cabinets and your appliances. So there's a room visualizer. We can take a picture of your room imprint your floor in there and you'll have an idea of how it's going to look. Yeah. How that's cool great. is that? Similar to like our 3d renderings for, you know, full kitchens, bathrooms, full homes. Yeah. 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 Technology is, uh, is real asset to folks. We yeah. found even some customers take our picture of when, once we've imprinted the floor in their tile and send it to their friends and say, well, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> that lifelike. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah awesome. It looks that good. So, so the, the advantages again of LVT tile over ceramic tile is price point, longevity, um, the, the grout doesn't discolor. Uh, it doesn't crack when you drop stuff on it. I mean, if you drop a safe on it, it's going to hurt the LVT. Yeah, you know, you know, that's why I tell people about, about warranty all the time. Like, yes, we have a 10-year structural warranty. Mm-hmm. But if you had one too many beers and drive through the, you know, the broad side of your home, yeah, not covered in the warranty, right? Yeah. Like, you have to still protect the flooring appropriately. Yeah. It's like if we install a wood staircase for you and you put a 3000 pound dolly safe on a dolly and you carted up the staircase. I feel like that's happened. (laughs) That happened recently. Real story. Recently. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah. We, yeah, we got called back because uh, a stair nose was separating from the rest of the floor. And I they're like, why? why Why is a stair nose separating from the rest of the floor? And we go to inspect it, and there's three giant chunks missing from the <laughs> the, the stair nose where, the, where they tried car- carting a 3,000 pound. You know, I'm exaggerating, obviously. The safe, yeah, I'm sure, wasn't 3, 3K, but. Yeah. yeah. They need one of those um, old people, like, wheelchairs that is an elevator type thing on well, the rail. Yeah, th- yeah, that's how I got up and down the stairs because I'm not in as good I shape I can't wait as till I'm the be. age to use that. It's yeah. so fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. Well, man, it was great talking to you. Uh, hopefully this is, you know, a good value to our customers and potential customers and people all around about what they should be doing, what floor they should install. Um, so thanks for your time. I appreciate yeah, it. My pleasure. Thank you, Ryan, for having me.